The Tour de Mont Blanc is a 180 km long distance trail through France, Italy and Switzerland. Hiking over 35,000 feet of ascent and carrying my own tent and gear. Can I make it in just five days? From the stunning trails in France onto the breathtaking views in Italy and the great company in Switzerland. This truly was a hike to remember. This is grim, absolutely wet out already probably. So sit back and enjoy the journey as I take one of the most spectacular trails in the Alps. <sighs> yes. Welcome back to another video. You'll find me in La Houche in France to take on the Tour de Mont Blanc. It's a little bit of a last minute trip, only booked a few weeks ago, but really, really looking forward to it. I arrived yesterday about 6 p.m. The weather was awful, so we stayed into a lodge. I'll overlay a couple of little images there, uh, which was lovely. It's half six in the morning. I'm gonna be making a start on the trail. So here I am at the start gate. I've got all my gear with me. I'm going to be wild camping, and as my flights are booked, I need to do this in eight days or less. If you're unfamiliar with the trail, it's a trail around the Blanc Monk Massif and you go through France, Italy and finish in Switzerland and it's 170 kilometres which is about 105 miles. So although I've done those distances before, it's very very steep basically. It's 35,000 feet of ascent over the eight days. As you can probably see in the background, the weather ain't great. This morning it's okay until about 11 and then it's thunderstorms for nearly all night and it's the same for the next couple of days but there's no point in moaning it is what it is that's why i've got a waterproof coat on all ready to start i've got all new gear if you watch to your friends of the channel you'll recognize my gear it's all different for this one so i can talk through that later in the video if it's your first time here my name's chris uh, i do hiking while camping long distance hikes which i absolutely love so if you like that sort of thing do consider subscribing um, and yeah, drop a comment below, say hi. This series, I'm going to do a video for each day and that'll be released daily on my YouTube. So if you just stumbled on this video, after you've watched this one, there's a little series here and it'll give you an insight as to what it's like to, uh, to hike the Tour de Mont Blanc. So this is us, which one are we heading to? Somewhere, I think it's this. So this is the start of the brutal climb. It is quite a brutal climb out of uh, La Houche. Let's just address the elephant in the room, two of them. That's Danny, behind, say hello Danny. <laughs> and number two, it's boiling so I've had to lose my coat already, it's gonna be hot. And I know it's not a good look with my boobs. So it is what it is. So we've basically just leveled out a little bit and we'll just get into the bit where we've got a brutal climb. A lot of people skip this. You have got an option to take a cable car up, but that's cheating. The views are unbelievable. Got this nice glacier up in the distance. But so far out of La Houche, quite a few steps and then it's just twisty road at the moment. So I've come to do this with Dan, but we've decided we're obviously doing it together, but we're going to go up our, at our own pace, kind of on the sections and stuff, or up and down. So I'm always quite good going up. So while I can, I'm just going to push on. Then it means I get a little rest and let Danny catch up. Poles out from day one to save my legs. Definitely essential. One hour 30. Just to the left of me, past these puts, is where you can get the uh, the ski lift. Say about 90% of people, from what I've seen, do it, but I don't want to do that. Hopefully take on some of the variants as well, there's some higher routes. We'll have to see as, as we go weather-wise. If there's thunderstorms, we can't. You'll see the ski lift here now. It's actually not on. I don't think it opens till like eight o'clock, but we'll be at the top of there before then. Certainly getting a sweat on. I sweat. Whew. <laughs> this is pretty much the terrain all the way up so far, just in the woodland, blowing out my ass. So steep. Danny's way behind. But we're taking a couple of people. 
not that it's a race, but it gives you nice little goals. I've just seen someone else quite far in the distance, so I'm gonna try and push on and catch them. Just taking little one minute breathers every now and then. Get my breath back and go again. You can see what we've kind of come up. La Hooge, right at the bottom. Obviously none of this is open yet, but this is the point where you could get off. But we will be carrying on. I'm feeling okay, it's steep though. Oof. It's a blower. Honestly, impossible without poles. I'm gonna stop saying this, but if you come, bring poles. It's a no brainer. Everybody has them without fail. Yeah, so Danny's caught up now. He got into his rhythm. It takes a little bit on this because it's steep. There's another guy here. What's your name? Adelina. <laughs> and he's from France. Yes. Yeah, from France. And this is his first time doing something big like this. And he's carrying 17 kilos. Ooh, yeah. He's got <laughs> 10 days of food. My bag, by the way, with my water. I think I'm nine ki 8.6 kilo, 8.4 kilo plus my water. And I've got two 850 mils. So for those who know, that's 850 mil is 850 grams. Mil converts into grams. So I've got 1.7 kilograms of water. I've got some electrolytes in. Get your electrolytes in. Must do tournament monkey seven days. Turbo. Look at this, a eh? brand new tyre for this. Got a new bag, Atom, Atom RE40, custom pack. <laughs> new shoes, going for the Ultra Timp 5s. I bought the Olympus 5 for my last one, but then I thought I'll mix it up. The other thing I picked up for this one is the Roo, Atom Pack Roo. It gives you an extra one and a half litre. I've never fancied a bum bag, but it's honestly great. Just get a load of shizzle in there for the day. Also, watch. I've upgraded the watch. I've got the Phoenix 7X Pro Solar Sapphire as well. Great setup for this. Mark, I'll just explain now, as we've come to this little bit here, you'll see some other people behind us. Now, our map takes us down, down the trail, but we've noticed people coming up this bit here, and this is one of the variants. So on the Tour de Mont Blanc, you've got high and low variants. So we're gonna go for the high variant. Weather's not great later, but while it's okay, we're gonna go for the high variant on this one. The colder trio, I think it is. Something like that. We could live to regret this mistake, but we don't just wanna do the route. So basically we're going off my, we're not gonna be on the map anymore. The route I've plotted, but sure we'll be fine. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Bellevue, this place is shut down, which is a shame. Just look at the views ahead of us. There's a few people now all converge on the trail, working out which way to go. I think it's this one. Okay, as you see from that sign, it splits off here. Luckily, we're not going high yet. It is the high route though, the variant. So we're actually going through the forest, through here. Waterfall over there and down from the glacier. Who needs ropes? Just walking along game, just look how big these are. And we're at 1,755 meters now. We're just getting to a bit where we cross the raging river. <laughs> I think it's on like a bit of a um, ropey bridge. Very bouncy. Me and Danny just pushed past everyone. <laughs> Big cues. This is us, called a Trico on the variant, one hour 25. 
Right, let's get to the top of this, another hour and a half. So we've moved out of the wooded area, let's say. A little bit of a climb and we've leveled out a touch. We're at 1860 meters now and look, still look at the elevation above us. I'm just following this trail. See some people ahead. Some serious mountains there. We've done 11K, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's obviously steep. And it's, uh, it's quarter past 10 in the morning. So we've been going for three hours, 15. Elevation, we're at 1,954 meters. Oh wow, that's where we were earlier on. I have to say, I've missed this hiking. I know I've had a long break from the channel, I do apologise. I've struggled to get out hiking, as many people know, I've had a bit of a struggle for the last five or six months, so this is my first major hike really. Basically couch to uh, Tour de Mont Blanc, but honestly, I feel alive when I'm on these. I absolutely love it and I'm in my element. So happy. Not happy that I feel like I've got boobs <laughs> with this on, but with the next couple of weeks of events that I've got, this one and the Apex Challenge, I'll have about 70,000 feet of ascent in two weeks. Pfft, killer. We've finally reached the top of the Calder Trico. Here we go. And that's the descent, grim. Okay, I'm gonna take some pictures. I have another rest for five minutes and then we're gonna head down. It's only quarter to 12, sorry, it's quarter to 11, so we're doing really well for time. I think, very proud of what we've done so far. So we only stopped for two minutes, took a couple of pictures and we're carrying on. It's a little bit cool up here, so we're gonna keep warm, keep going and we've got to get all the way down there so we can make up a little bit of time now get down without burning our knees out <laughs> so until my knees start hurting this is what we're gonna do come down nice and quick make up a lot of time like this it's a little bit easier as well finally made it to the bottom just near the huts you see Danny Danny's up here somewhere, up there. It didn't take that long to be fair. 20 minutes, something like that. Running down, but that's just saved a load of time. It's probably killed my knees. But yeah, it's nice to be on a little bit of a flat. So we're hoping there's some little shops or something here. I've already got my food. I'm already carrying that, but it'd be nice to get a coffee and maybe a little cheeky bar of chocolate. I've been munching on dried banana chips, which, are, <laughs> which I really recommend. The sun's out, it's boiling which is good. I need to check the weather as well. There's, there are um, storms still forecast for later. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But for now, just appreciate the sun and the views. I apologize, there's no setting up of the camera on this one. I might do it at some stage, but I'm trying to save my legs. What is a little bit concerning is I've just had my first wee, <laughs> which means I'm not very hydrated. I've only had 850 mil today and a cup of tea this morning. So I've got another 850 mil full bottle there with electrolytes in. I'm gonna drink all of that now, fill up and carry on. So this must be one of the refugios. Oh yeah, refuge de mayage. So some people stay here. We'll have a little look what food they've got. I think it's gonna be expensive. Some desserts there, eight euros, nine euros. Get some food. After all that effort setting up the camera and sitting down, I was going to show you my food. Completely forgot. So I ordered a baguette with like salami on it and pickle. It was mega. It was only seven euros. But now it's time to go. Head off. We're going up, up, up and across. So now I'm fueled. I've drank all my water apart from that 400 mil. So I'm full up, full up on electrolytes. And now we're heading to Les Contamines. So we've got a bit of an ascent again. I think we're only ascending for, it's quite a steep ascent, but only for a couple of kilometers and then it's downhill again. The downside about going down is you know you've got to come back up. 
Look at that. Oh, look how I've just seen as well. Perfect. Water source. I'm topping up here. Get in. Do you know what? You could probably just you could probably just drink this water, but I'll filter it. This is when we find out if the filter's clogged or not. Probably. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Fully topped up. Dropped an electrolyte in it. That'll do me. And I've got a little bit of water left. That could just stay on my chest for now and I'll just drink that as we go. Oh, the weather's rolling in. Ooh. Bit dark on top of there. Time to get going. And off we go. You can see up there and up to the side. Oh, it's a steep one. My quads are burning, cramping a little bit, but we push on. Back to the cows again. Nice and cool air now. Maybe it's that way, maybe it's this way, I'm not sure. Not sure where Danny is. Left him on the hill. Looks like it's round here. I'll check the, we'll check the signpost, but I wonder if it's up there. I'll have to have a look on my map because as I say, the route I've plotted, I've just pl plotted the low route for the whole TMB. So although I can see the trail on my, on my watch, I can see the paths. Um, I don't know which ones are path, it highlights blue when, you, when it's on route, but you can see at the bottom it says 1.5k, if you can see it in the sun, move my head, maybe this side, or maybe not, but 1.5k is how far off the route we are, off the traditional route. Ah, this is another little mountain that you can tag, I'm not up for that, I'm not bothered. Less concert means, that's where we're going. One hour fifteen. Big boy. The great news is, I've topped out. Yay! <laughs> so now it's downhill all the way to Les Contamines or Lake Contamines. Now down there, that's where you've got a bit of a supermarket, a few shops, a lot of people stop there. But our plan, we need to get to the bottom and then we need to push on. I mean, if the weather rolls in, there's a storm due. So if it absolutely starts hammering it down and we know it's in for the rest of the night, then we may find a place to camp or even a, or even a campsite if we need to. I really don't want to do that. I want to stay wild camping, ideally. But if the weather's okay, we will try and push on and just try and do another three, four K or whatever it is. The benefit of that as well is you get ahead of, everybody, ahead of everyone. So in the morning, you're not all leaving together. So you get the trail to yourself a little bit. So this is Chalet de Truc, uh, 1,725 meters. Uh, that's where we've just come from. That was 25 minutes ago. Called the tree cot. That's what we went over before. And now this is where we're going. One hour 15. You know, all this messing around, and I still can't see Danny. Looking right in the distance there. Uh, I don't know if he's coming around that corner. I don't, know if he, I don't think he is. Right, I'm pushing on. We must be struggling on that hill. Hopefully he's okay. He's done lots of trails himself before, he'll be fine. It sounds like an obvious thing, but when you're coming down, don't just walk straight down and dry your legs. Kind of run to the side, and, you know, vary the, the, the way your feet check, the, the way your feet are facing. Because when you're coming down all the time, it's just pounding on your knees. And that just varies it. Just a touch, but it helps. It makes a difference. On these long distance treks, anything where you can just save your legs a little bit, like using poles. Oh, I've not had them out of my hand. And amazing. Starting for a little bit. Let's hope we're going the right way. Yes. The weather has been perfect today. Perfect. I can't imagine doing this in the height of summer. Yes, you'll get better weather, but oh my God, with the heat, it'll be tough. 
September supposed to be a kind of like a mixed bag. It's supposed to be a little bit less rainfall, but we had plenty last night and there's plenty due later. Little water top up point here as well. On there. I must admit, on this trail, you saw me top up that water before. That is the first place um, that we've seen to top up water the whole trip. So you really, really do need to carry. I didn't want to carry a lot of water at first, I never normally do. But I brought two 850ml bottles and I filled them both and I'm glad I did because there's been nowhere to top up apart from that one little grey uh, bit of water coming out before and that there. And then it's a nice bit of relaxing time until Danny gets in. I wish I could just crack on now and keep walking. I've done 20 kilometres, 20.3 kilometres. It's hard to appreciate at home because <laughs> it's steep, you know, up to two and a half. It's been up to 2,050 metres, I think, today. Average speed of 3.1 kilometres an hour, which isn't bad considering the elevation been going for six hours 33 currently at 1271 meters and the highest we got to is actually 2116 15 minutes later 20 minutes later here he is slow and steady slow and steady i'm getting to the end simple <laughs> as just nipped in the supermarket got myself some kind of sandwich i'm guessing chicken chicken egg tomato something like that and i've just topped up my trail mix so i'll show you what i'm using the trail so banana chips and m m's Chocolate, well, peanut M&M's. Got a little flapjack left over, what I've not had today. Got myself a nice Coke. And I've still got a water for later. My bag is feeling so heavy. I need to eat. Again, this is another sandwich today, but you need it. You're burning so many calories. And we've got another ascent now for another few hours. My watch warning's already gone off to say storm. So let's hope that doesn't happen. We're going to get something to eat. And then we're going to push on and try and find somewhere to camp in about two three hours i met two lads before from the uk so if you're watching hello uh, they're doing the tour de mont blanc the opposite way around they've been smashing it but they did say the wardens are on it they're okay if you pitch after seven and leave before nine there's some areas that say bivouac he said and that's where you're allowed to wild camp so we'll keep our eye out but if we get to about six o'clock and we've pushed on then we'll probably just hang around there wait till seven then we can pitch up it's basically egg mayonnaise and just like that, just like that, we're back on the trail. So we've literally just picked up the route again. We've only been going a few minutes. So we've come out of the village and the plan is now to push on as far as we can. Now we do know there are some wild camping spots or where it's permitted, a bivouac area, probably a couple of hours away. So we're going to push to that. We're just concerned about the weather, that's all. I mean, we're going to have to see what happens. I just hope the weather stays off. It's getting your tent into pitching it in the rain. It's never nice, getting your stuff in, soaked, not drying it off, condensation. <laughs> well, let's carry on and let's see what's, see what's on the trail next. I've done no research to this hike, by the way, zero. So I don't know, I don't know anything about the trail or what we're going to see, what we're going to do. So yeah, she'll be interested. Just walking along the trail and just noticed this. So that to me looks like my top up point for water. I'm going to quickly top up and then get going again. The colour of the water is beautiful. We don't know where we're heading to now, we're just going to keep going. It's 45 minutes to Notre, Notre Dame de, de la Gorge, I think, something like that. So obviously, you know, we're going to get there and then we're going to push on past there. We're just going to keep going. Keep going. We'll check the weather out and play it by that, to be honest. But if we can push, we might as well push as, as much as we can today while we're feeling good. And the weather at the moment is on our side. That mist is rain that we should be walking into in a second. You can see it all along there. It's fine rain, that. Two minutes after, we're in the rain. It's only light mist because we're under a little bit of cover. This could be the start of the bad weather. And it's supposed to last for like five hours. Oh. Please no. <laughs> I know I should have had this on sooner as I'm getting changed, but the rain's coming down heavy. Got my waterproof otter socks on. These are great. It's because I'm wearing trail runners, you see. So with trail runners, you can get wet feet. So let's have a go with that.
and good to go. Full water Bruce. Heading this way. I've got a new jacket for this trip as well. Well, I've had it for a couple of months, but I've not really worn it before. I've got the Rab Firewall light jacket. I think it's 20,000 hydrostatic head, three layer, but it's definitely thinner than my Montane one I normally like to wear. And I've not tested this in the rain, so I really do hope it, 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 um, it holds up. I got it for the color, clearly. That's the only reason I bought it. I didn't need a jacket, but I like to have my orange and my Montane one's a little bit red. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully this is okay. The pants, by the way, I've worn them on a lot of things now and these are just um, kip run. So decathlon pants, like 39.99, they're brilliant. Super lightweight, you can get them on over your shoes, well worth it. I do have some like quite expensive full, full zip ones. You really don't need them. And they're heavy and bulky, these are great. Rain's coming down, it's not too bad. I'm sweating though. Just got a t-shirt on, this waterproof coat. Waterproof socks feel great. This is not sponsored, but if you're looking for some waterproof socks, Otter socks on Amazon, best waterproof socks. Seal skins are shite. No offense seal skins if you watch this, but the, the, the trouble with seal skins in, are they waterproof? Yes. Will your feet get wet? Probably not, no. It's the fit. They're really, it feels like there's no shape to them. It feels like you're putting your foot in a wetsuit. And I bought some and they're expensive and oh, the, I hated them. I just hated how they feel on your foot. Your foot was flapping around in them. Now, otter socks fit brilliantly. I'm a size 10, but I buy the medium ones, which are a six to eight, because I like them a little bit tighter on your foot as opposed to sagging a little bit. And they go on like a sock. They feel like a sock, they're totally waterproof. Um, I've got the ankle ones, I know they're a funky color, but the reason I bought these ones is it's the only ones they do in the, in the very short size. And the company is a brilliant company. It's a family run company. And I met them at the Outdoor Expo a couple of years ago. They're not the cheapest. They're about, I think I paid 20, 24 pounds on Amazon for these. But if you compare them to seal skins, they are cheap. And it was a last minute purchase and I thought, oh, should I get them? And I'm glad I did. So this is our next little point, 20 minutes away. Okay, the trail carries on there, but we're just gonna come off the trail quickly. Look at this beautiful church. This is the Notre Dame de Gorge. Pont de la Gorge here, look at this. So we're just gonna have a little cheeky look at the church here. Not big on me churches, but it's a size church's gold. It's a nice one, have a look at this. Nice, isn't it? I don't know if you're allowed to take your GoPro in, so I'll turn it off while I get inside and then sneakily turn it on. Now's the time for the ascent again. Rain stopped. It stopped before, so I've gone back to t-shirt and shorts. Okay, this is just clocked here. We're gonna be at our next point in 15 minutes. I think Danny wants to stop at this next bit, but it's 15 minutes away, so we'll get up there and we'll see. The next point after that is an hour and a half from now, which means it would take till half past six. But again, it depends on the legs, doesn't it? I feel good, but we'll go to this next bit and let's see, Danny doesn't want to go any further, but I don't know whether I'm gonna push on or not. I'll decide when we're up there. Chalet Nant Borant. So we're gonna have a little look up here, see what's going on, see what the camping's like and then make a decision. What's your decision, Danny? Oh, I know where I'm going, sunshine. I'm camping at Nambar and that's me, done for the day. This <laughs> leaves with a carry on because of the beast. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see, let's see what the pitch is like here. Max, don't get right, it, under dress. Max, <laughs> We've come down to this little bit of a bivouac area. It ain't great. And as you can hear, oh, we've got all these. Look at all these clanging, leading things all night. 
So we've got these clanging. They're stood in the water, pissing and shitting. And people are probably soaking in here. And look, this is it. I mean, where do you pitch here, man? Oh, I'll bring you back when we find somewhere. Right, we've just had a little look round there. The ground's awful. Very bumpy. You've got the water, which is going to be a condensation nightmare down here, but noisy. You've got all these clanging all night. So we're pushing on. Yes. Again, it's going to be a bit of a slog because it's another hour. But we've already been walking for probably 10 hours. We're heading up there, just in the cloud or just below the cloud. But there's another refugio. Now you can't camp at those, but we're just going to have a little look to see if there's anywhere we can jib off the route and pitch our tents. As I say, it's electrified. It is electrified, which means it's keeping something out and normally it's the cows. So the only issue is that there could be cows on one side of this and we don't want cows trampling us in the night because they're massive. Well, this has been a brilliant day. I honestly feel amazing. My shoulders, oh, my, my traps are really sore. I'm gonna have to go, it's on 1%, but my traps are really sore, but yeah, it's good. Right, let me stop this recording so I don't lose it and get up there. We've made it to the bit where you pitch. It's absolutely rammed with people, but just found my pitch right here. All set up, there we are. Great little pitch. I don't want to go through all my gear, but I'll show you very, very quickly a couple of things that I brought today because I've changed things up a little bit, trying a few new things on this. Obviously, not new to the channel, you'll know. I've got a Dursin X made, I've had that for a while. But what's new to me, first of all, I'm trying the Kilos Gear Ultralight Pad. Bought it myself. Um, I normally have my Thermos X Therm, which is obviously excellent. Now, these, this is, I mean, it's super thin, but it's really long. It absolutely fills this tent. It's like two meters long so two two part two meters five so it's really really good but it is thin so i'm curious if this is going to keep me warm tonight but i thought i'd bring it because it's a little bit different it packs thinner than my x-therm and it's nice and wide usual suspect x-bed pillow new quilt for this one um this is a enlightened equipment enigma 850 which this is the one obviously has the sewn in foot box um and again, we'll see how that is tonight. I'll be honest with you, so expensive quilts now. If you think about it, it's only a bit of material and down. And I think it was £368. It's absolutely ridiculous. No need for it. But for this trip, I wanted something lighter. So you pay the sacrifice, don't you? So again, I've changed this up a little bit. That's the gas I bought before. I've got my Cedar Summit cup. I often bring this, but I've got the slightly upgraded one, which is a little bit more, a little bit more rigid. Um, so I've brought this plastic tub. And basically, I use this to do all my meals. So all my dehydrated meals, I've put them in cling film bags. And they go in there. They fit in there perfectly, a dehydrated meal. You fill it up with water, put that on, and eat it out of there. Also great for cold soaking. Now, what fits in there, as you saw perfectly, is this new, this new pot. Look at that. Fits in. Absolute perfect. And the lid goes on. So in this pot, this is the new... Tokes 550 ultra light. It's very thin, very light. Really good part. Again, no need to pay this money for these, but downsides, very, very thin handles, so they do get hot. So you need your little grippers. I always have this little crappy sponge. I use the sponge to hold it because it gets absolutely red hot. And the stove I brought, I have about 15 stoves, honestly. I love my stoves. But I've just bought a new one of these because my other one was broke. But what I brought is the good old BRS. 26 grams again they're cheap aren't they they're like i think i paid seven pound on aliexpress but just for a newer version mine was broke but because there's no wind in here that's that's going to be perfect and that is it that's all i'm going to show you so the refugio is over there so i think what we're going to do shut up the tents we're going to walk over there see if we can grab a beer if we can i'll show you what it's like but if not unless anything happens tonight i'm just going to end the video here it's been an epic first day We've come a lot further than we than we wanted to. In fact, let me give you the final stats, bear with me a second. So today, it's now half past six, we're all pitched up, good to go, nice to chill. We've done 33.6 kilometers today. And you know, if you're not, if you're high, you know 33K is a good trek anyway. But on the elevation we've done today, it's crazy. I've been walking for about 11 hours, 10 minutes today. Current elevation, 1,704 meters. 
today, the ascent we've done today, the total ascent we've done today is 2,125 metres. <laughs> and we've done 1,400 metres of descent. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's brutal, but really, really enjoyable. So I'm going to leave it tonight. Unless anything else happens, I'll include it. Thank you for watching the video. The next few days are going to be shorter. This is just my longer first day. It's, uh, I'm new, you know, I'm, I'm, I've not put a video out for ages, so I'm going to cut them a little bit shorter, make sure I don't run out of space. Let's get just the key moments of the hikes in for you and give you a few little tips and things along the way. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please tune in tomorrow, or if you're watching this video back, the next one will come up in the series, but these are going to be released daily. So come back tomorrow as I wake up and you'll get day two. Thanks very much. Peace.